And for the lentils, I've uh, measured out half a cup. I'm going to put these in a sieve and run these under running cold water for a few minutes in order to make sure that they're well run. Okay. The lentils in the pan. Cover with 300 milliliters of water. And we're going to bring this up to a, a good solid simmer, almost a boil. Okay, I've got 30 grams of onion here. I'm going to dice this in a minute. I've got two green chilies. <coughs> That's the ratio. Uh, you can see the annotations there explaining this to you. I can get rid of the tips. And if you want this really hot, you can leave the the uh, seeds and the membrane in it. Uh, <laughs> I don't want it quite that hot, so I'm going to scrape these. But yeah, it's, an, it's entirely up to you. And you repeat it with the, with the, uh, the other chili exactly the same, of course. You uh, split the chilies down like this, make them a little bit smaller, and give them a chop like this. Yeah, don't, don't follow my knife technique. I always get people writing an email saying, Are you sure you're a professional? You don't curl your fingers up enough. I haven't had a serious knife injury in 20 years. So. Um, there's the onion that also finally chopped up. Okay, we got pretty good boil going on the lentils now. Now I'm going to turn the heat down and begin the timing of the lentils. I'm turning it down on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm turning it down to 3. It was on 9. Um, and I'm going to uh, time the cooking of them starting right now. Meanwhile, in another pan, I'm going to begin cooking on a, a 5, 1 to 10. I've got uh, the butter in there, and we're going to let this melt before I add the onions and the green chilies to it. Okay, the butter has melted. I've got the heat on now on a 4, from 1 to 10. I'm going to add the onions and the green chilies to this. Give it a stir, and I'm going to just cook these very, very gently while the uh, the lentils continue to cook. I'm just going to give these a few minutes on their own first. Okay, this has been cooking for about five minutes now, the low heat. Now I'm going to add 45 grams of the paste. Let's stir it together and continue cooking this for a few minutes more while the, while the uh, lentils finish cooking. Okay, this has been cooking for about three minutes now and the lentils have now been cooking for a total of 14 minutes. So, it is time to bring the two together. And stir this continue stirring it once in a while. We're going to let this continue to simmer for a few more minutes. You might need to cover this to keep it from splattering. Don't cover it all the way though. Leave the room for steam to escape. Let's just do that now. There we go. That's fine. After a few minutes, enough steam has escaped that it's not going to splatter anymore. Uh, I've also reduced the heat down to a 3 on a scale of 1 to 10. And uh, I'm going to stir this uh, uncovered. Taste it. See how much salt it needs. It will need some. Those lentils were not salted before because they get tough if, if, you, uh, if you salt them while they're still cooking. So I'm testing this out here with a little bit of salt. You know, you add to how much you want. They're almost done right now. You can see it's getting thick as you drag a spoon across it. Yeah, they're getting close. I'm going to cook them a few more minutes. Salt them. They'll be good. show you just how easy this is. I've uh, weighed out 60 grams of that paste. This is two cloves of garlic that uh, I just minced. This is 22 grams, three quarters of an ounce of peanut oil. Yeah, you can use vegetable oil if you need to. You're going to stir this together. And then I'm adding 
adding 200 grams of uh, cut up boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And you can just stir this around in the marinade, cover it with some cling film, make sure it's well, make sure that the chicken gets the marinade on all sides, all pieces of the chicken get it. And then we're going to refrigerate it overnight. We use it the next day. If you need to do it the same day, okay, you can, you can refrigerate it only for two or three hours, but it's better if you refrigerate it overnight. So I got the butter weight out. I've cut the onions into um, slices. Each one's about uh, sixteenth of an inch thick, eighth of an inch thick, somewhere around there, about three millimeters. And add the butter to the pan and just a little bit of oil. Keep it from burning. When this is uh, hot and melted, we'll add the onions and start cooking them slowly. Then you just kind of help break the rings up. But as you put it in the onion, it'll they'll break apart as they cook anyway. On a scale one to ten, I've got this on a six, so I'm going to cook these until they're golden. But I'm not going to rush them but by cranking up the heat and burning them. Meanwhile, this is a little trick. Well, you get coconut milk. Um, open it up, put it into the glass jar. I'll show you what. You get these solids, you're gonna have to work these out a little bit. You don't want to have an even coconut milk unless of course you're using a whole can at once, then then it doesn't matter so much. But if you're gonna be using it a little bit at a time, you want this homogenous and it never is in the can and you can't shake it up enough in the can because the can doesn't have enough air room in it to to make it work. So you put it in a jar and shake it first. Not only do you have a place to store the rest of the coconut milk in the refrigerator now, but you've also got a nice even homogeneous solution. So when you when you pour out the onions are cooking away. They're gonna take a few minutes to get to the right stage. In fact, they're looking like they're cooking just a little bit too hot, so I'm turning the heat down from 6 to 5. Okay, onions are just starting to turn golden. And you've got some little tiny flecks of, of brown on them. They've been cooking now for uh, about 8 minutes. Now, I've got the chicken that marinated overnight, along with all the paste that was on it, of course. This is going to go in. We're going to cook this chicken with the onions and also loosen up the paste at the same time. Okay, this cooked for uh, three minutes with the, the heat still on five. I never changed it. And you can see the chicken's not pink anymore underneath there. The uh, curry paste is all loosened up. Now I'm going to add the coconut milk. Stir this around, and I'm actually going to reduce the heat a little bit from five. I'm going to go down just down to four now. I'm going to leave this sit at a slow simmer for a few minutes. We'll come back to it after it reduces a bit. You'll notice that after about uh, 12 minutes or so, it starts to get noticeably darker. Now, one of the tricks, <laughs> restaurant tricks is you can add half a teaspoon of curry powder to this now. Yeah, it's not traditional Indian food, I know, but it is a traditional restaurant trick in Indian restaurants to help freshen, brighten, and intensify the flavor of the curry, and also to add some diversity so they can use the same masala for more than, more than one dish without having them all taste identical. So here's a nice trick. We're going to continue cooking this a few more minutes, but um, add the curry towards the end. Add a little curry powder. Or don't, you know, if you feel bad, you want to make it without any curry powder, you can do that. Okay. <clears throat> it's been uh, about three minutes more. I should warn you, when you're doing this part of the cooking, again, don't try to rush it. Don't use a high heat. You'll split the, the coconut uh, milk, and it'll be a runny, oily mess. It's, that's the main reason it happens. Now I'm going to add <clears throat> some chopped, fresh cilantro, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to taste it for salt because we haven't added any salt to this dish except the little bit that was in the masala. So, 
taste it. I mean, it absolutely will need some salt, no question. Exactly how much, you know, you'll have to taste to find out. And this is basically ready now. You can see it's nice texture, flavor's great. This is first rate quality Indian restaurant food right now. Okay, this dish is a version of Bombay potatoes. Not exactly the same, but it's very similar. And it shows you <laughs> how dramatically Indian food has changed. Uh, I'm going to begin by adding 60 grams of uh, this paste. I've got 22 grams of peanut oil. Again, peanut oil, you can use vegetable oil. Peanut oil will give it a better taste. Um, I've got two cloves of garlic that were cut up fairly coarsely this time. They're cut up, but they're, they're not super fine. And I've got an, a 30 grams, about an ounce of onion. Uh, also cut small, about the same size as the garlic pieces were cut. Small, but not tidy. Here's a couple of ingredients that are almost impossible to believe would go in Indian food. I've got apricot jam and I put about one and a half teaspoons of apricot jam in it. Also, this is just, I still can't get over this, but this is actually how it's made. A teaspoon of dried rosemary. Rosemary in Indian food, who would have thought? And about a teaspoon, a little bit more of apple cider vinegar. Okay, that part's fairly normal. But the uh, apricot jam and the rosemary is, is just weird. But this is exactly how it's made right now in India. <laughs> as weird as, as it seems. Sometimes they use chutney in place of the apricot jam and the vinegar. Uh, but uh, I actually prefer it with the apricot jam and the, and the vinegar. And now we get 250 grams of uh, potatoes that were cubed. Uh, like three quarters of an inch cubed, something like that. They don't have to be exact at all. This is going to be obviously cooked for quite a while here. Okay, now we're going to load the potatoes into <coughs> ceramic baking dish. By the way, this dish is, is not dirty. I know people also give me comments about things being dirty here. The, the ring you see around here, if you can see that even in the video, <laughs> this has been through the dishwasher many, many times. I picked this this dish up in France about <laughs> 25 years ago. It's uh, seen a lot of use. It's so dirt on there, it's just permanent now. Anyway, now you don't have to turn this into an arts and crafts project, but you want a piece of parchment paper that goes over the top of this fairly well. And then you're going to cover it with foil tightly, really tightly. <coughs> the unveiling here. And there's our curried Bombay type potatoes. Not exactly Bombay because I've changed a couple things, but nice, nice curry. Okay, transfer these to a plate. As with the other recipes here, we're going to begin this by uh, putting a little bit of, this time just oil, just oil, and we get 45 grams of onion here, it's been sliced, and we're going to cook these 
as before until they start to turn golden on a heat of uh, 5 on 1 to 10. For this one we're taking the onions browner and if you can see this clearly they're much browner than they were for the other recipes in this in this video. Um, it's not because I turned the heat up higher it's because I let it cook a little bit longer. The heat is still, I'm still using uh, 5 on 1 to 10. When you see the onions are, are sufficiently browned I've got 30 somewhere between 30 and 45 grams of this masala paste it's up to you and I've got a, a good healthy tablespoon of tamarind paste and uh, it's just really sticky you can get tamarind paste at an Indian store or you can extract it with hot water from the tamarind uh, you can get more readily but the paste is sure a lot easier to use and doesn't cost much more so stir this around with the onions. This is a very, very nice and fast recipe to make. Just basically, once you, you get, once you get this incorporated, the shrimp cook for a minute, and and you're ready. You're good to go. This is also what we Indians would call a dry curry. There's not a lot of liquid with this. Um, the shrimp I'm using have the tails on, and also <laughs> I'm only using about 60 grams of shrimp. Really, this is this is enough. Um, enough material here for about 90 grams uh, just at the moment I happen to be running short of shrimp that are defrosted and ready so um, so you're going to start timing it after you add the shrimp about uh, one minute it's been one minute I'm going to add a little squeeze of lemon juice and about a tablespoonful to loosen this up and then I'm going to transfer it to a plate this dish is, is one of those ones that's very difficult to plate up and have it look attractive. And uh, also, I would use a silver plate for this if I had one. I, I just don't happen to have one. That would help it a lot, though. Use a small silver plate. Also, look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.